I'm a neuroscientist, which means I had to go to grad school for over five years just to be able to ask questions about the brain. Because the only way you could actually do experiments in neuroscience is you actually go to grad school and work at a research lab. Because the equipment is so expensive and so complicated that it's only found in research labs like in universities. But it's not like that in other fields of science. If you think if you want to learn about the planet, you can just go to your local store. You could pick up a cheap telescope, bring it back home, put it set up in your backyard, and you could start within a few nights, you know, exploring the heavens. But the point is you don't have to get a PhD to do that, right? But you have to get a PhD in, to do this in neuroscience because there are no tools like that. And that's a shame because one out of five of us has 20% of the entire world be diagnosed with a neurological disorder. And we have no known cures for these diseases. And so we should be making tools available to get people interested in neuroscience. And so when I was in grad school, uh, my lab mate Tim Marzullo and myself came up with this idea that what if we took all this complicated e equipment and made it simple enough and affordable enough that you could teach neuroscience all the way down even to the fifth grade level. And so for the past three years, we've been doing that. And so we have, uh, we build equipment and experiments that can do electrophysiology in the high school classroom. Electrophysiology is the recording of uh, living nervous system tissue. And so we do this not by recording the brains of the students or the brains of the teachers, but by the brains of these guys right here. And this guy is, if I can get him out, a beautiful South American cockroach. Even though it looks like it can fly, he actually cannot fly, he's a little bit too heavy. And I'm gonna pass this over to Tim, because just in a moment, we're gonna be doing some experiments that we would normally do in the high school classroom, but I wanna show you guys how it works. Uh, and just before, I, I wanna say, we just, I just made these comments about the human brain, and I, now I've pulled out a cockroach. What, why am I doing that? It turns out that our brain has 100 billion cells called neurons. The cockroach brain has about a million cells, but if you look at the individual neurons themselves, they're very, very similar between the two species. So you have a cell body that reaches out to reach out towards another neuron, and that long arm that reaches out is called an axon. It's down this axon that electrical impulses come down. These are called spikes, and it's through these spikes that all information is passed in the brain. It's the common currency of the brain. It's sort of the euro of the brain, if you will. And so how does the, how does the cockroach actually use this? So let's like look at one example, is antennas. So the cockroach just uses the antenna to sort of navigate the world, right? If you look at the antennas, it's covered with hairs. If you look at each hair, it has neurons inside of it. What are those neurons telling the brain? It's telling it like things that it touches or things that it sort of, the chemicals, it's almost like a nose that it's sort of sensing back in. And so through this, it could navigate. And so what would happen if, if those electrical impulses are coming back down there, but you stuck a very small wire inside the antenna? So that is the experiment we're going to do right now. We should be able to listen in and hear the activity of the, of the neurons. And so we're going to go back to Tim who has hooked up, we have a connector on the, onto the, uh, the cockroach where we've plugged into the, uh, the antennas. And if we can listen, if we turn it up. So outside the house, you can hear this, this little humming. It's that people tell me it sounds like raindrops. I hear that a lot. Or I hear often that it, it, it sounds like popcorn popping. But this is actually what's happening inside your brain. These are the neurons that are inside that antenna, but it's also the same neurons that are inside of you. And so you're actually listening to what your own brain sounds like. So all of your thoughts, your dreams, your hopes, your desires, everything is encoded within these spikes. And so you remember like in the, uh, in the Matrix when you saw like all that coding, oh my God, that's really, well, People, this is reality right here. The spikes is everything that you know. Okay, so let's go back to the slides for a second. I want to say uh, one more thing about, uh, about how the cockroach uses these uh, information. Okay, so the cockroach has these antennas. Like I said, he navigates the world with that, right? And so if, if, and if you were watching a cockroach walk down the street and something touches this left-hand side, it's going to turn and walk to the right. But if it's walking and it, something touches the right-hand side, it turns to walk to the left. That's the nature of the cockroach. So 
How does it do that? Because there's a neuron inside the, ante in the antenna that's sending the information back to the brain, right? What if we had that th thin wire that was in there, and instead of recording the electricity, we sent a little pulse of electricity to cause that neuron to fire. The cockroach would think that it was touching something and it should turn in the opposite direction. So ladies and gentlemen, we are about to introduce uh, the very first time we've done this prototype is called the Robo Roach. It's our latest invention. And we are going to hook it up to an iPhone. And so when you pair it to the Bluetooth of your iPhone, you can then send a small pulse to the backpack, which goes into either the left or the right antenna, and it will turn it. And so here we go. And Tim is going to let it go. And he's going to turn it to the left. All right. And you turn to the right. <laughs> He's a bit confused. All right, to the left, to the right. Perfect, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the world's first commercially available cyborg in the history of mankind. And so why are we doing this type of stuff? I mean, like, why would you make a cyborg? But it turns out this is the exact same technologies that's being used to treat Parkinson's disease with deep brain stimulation or cochlear implants for, uh, for deafness. And so if by getting these tools into the hands of kids, we could actually start to begin the neural revolution. Thank you. Wow. So well, while, we, <laughs> while we set up for some music, some okay. soothing music all right, that's perfect. after all that, um, a, a couple of questions. I'm, I'm just guessing that there's at least one person out in this audience who's going, Really? You're doing that to one of God's beautiful creatures? Yes, How we, could we, you, Greg? Exactly. No, no, we get, we, we get this a lot. And so there's a couple things I, I, I want to point out, which I wasn't very clear about. This is, this is microstimulation. So this is not like a painful response. So like people, they think it's being shocked when it turns around, but it's actually not. And so we can tell a number of different ways of why, why this is the case. But one of the things that this cockroach adapts very quickly. So after about a minute, it won't, it will stop turning. Uh, Whereas in, for like uh, this, this project actually started through DARPA. Uh, it was used for a remote control type of insect, but it turns out that it adapts pretty quickly. And so for engineering, it's not very good, but for neuroscientists, it's really good because the mm. brain adapts, that's what it does. And so it's a great teaching tool. Wait, 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 it started with DARPA. So, so how, many, how many robo roaches could you fit on a quadcopter? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, we, could, we could work on that. So. <laughs> That, that sounds like the plot of quite a bad movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just getting my head around that. But, but, but do it, taking this to school, your experiences that you inspire kids with well, this, you I'm get kids excited. To so we have had beta versions of this product out for, uh, for a number of years now. It's been three years in the making, this, this, this particular Robo Roach. And so one of the things that we do is we, we look at the frequencies at which you stimulate. And so we, we fixed it at the same thing that we use for like uh, deep brain stimulation, 55 hertz. But some students at a high school figured out that if you, they played their iPods into there, they can get the roach not to adapt as quickly. And so that got us thinking, like we, if we randomize the signals. And so these are discoveries that are being made from high schools that we've actually now rolled into our, our latest versions. So these are like, I think, starting to, to, starting to happen, this neural revolution. Well, one thing certain is I'm pretty sure that you have the attention of every kid <laughs> when, when you do that. Um, so um, no animals were irretrievably harmed in the making of this TED talk. Yeah, no, so the backpacks come off and they go back and they do whatever cockroaches do. They mate, they eat, and whatever they do. So. <laughs> Greg, thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.